Hello, hello. Hi guys, this is Lydia, the Lifestyle Coach, and we are ending eating disorders using nothing but your brain. And we are talking about binge eating and bulimia and overeating and food obsession and body hate and emotional eating and all of the different labels that get put on this issue that we struggle with with food. And it's about really ending that, ending that once and for all. And we're talking about something really important today. Um, and there is a fantastic video. I am going to post the link to the video um, in like underneath um, this video, this live feed that we're doing, so you guys have it. Um, it is a video put out by the New York Times about an incredible woman named Mary Kane who was the fastest woman in the world. And I am posting that link now, so you guys have it. Oh, you know what? Maybe I don't know how to post it. I'm gonna try again. Okay, I just posted it. So you guys will see that down there. I encourage you guys to watch that um, so you have context for our live feed today. But we're gonna um, go into a summary of the video, really the important points that it brought up um, and just how important this topic is. So let's back up and talk about with what we are doing at Life with Lydia, we are ending eating disorders. And we are here to get women out of every cage that they are put in so they can live their lives free and we can do what needs to be done in the world because we have the minds and the hearts and the bodies of incredible women all around the world given back to them. But we need to ask, who are we taking our minds and our bodies and our hearts back from? And that is something that we are gonna to touch on here in our video today. So in the process of getting an eating disorder, of ending an eating disorder. There is the people that we are helping right now that are in crisis. I've been struggling for an eating disorder for six months or 40 years or whatever it is. And they come to us already existing, having an eating disorder, having tried everything to fix it, nothing has worked to make it better. And we show them exactly how to end their eating disorder and to be free of it for the rest of their lives. So, that is one point of helping people. But then you have to ask the question of why do so many women have eating disorders? Why is this such a massive issue? And when you change the world, and when we're talking about ending eating disorders, we're not talking about as more and more people get eating disorders, we'll show them how to turn it around and not have one anymore. When we talk about ending eating disorders, we're talking about going upstream and going to the source of why eating disorders exist and ending it there. So eating disorders aren't created over and over again. So it's estimated between one in three and one in five women either have or have had suffered from an eating disorder. Now those are reported and there's so much shame and stigma around eating disorders that there are so many people out there suffering and struggling and controlled by their eating disorders and they don't say anything about it because of what a stigma that we have around it. And because of that, even fewer get reported. So when we really look at it, we're talking about this being a massive problem, a massive problem. We're talking about possibly more than half of the women in the world in some way, shape or form struggling with an eating disorder. And we have a lot of ways in society that we behave that is an absolutely destructive eating disorder that we don't label it as that. We label it as yo-yo dieting. We label it as, oh, I'm a chocoholic or I don't have any self-control. But what it really is, is it is disordered eating. It is compulsive eating. It is compulsive thinking about food. It's doing things with food, overeating it, binging it, purging it, restricting it that destroy a person's lives, that keep them completely distracted from what they can be doing in life and what their purpose is and how they can contribute to this world and have joy and happiness. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to give that freedom to someone so they're out of that cage and then they can get out of any other cage. But then we look at the problem of just how many women struggle with eating disorders. And then we look at some really clear factors like huge jumps, like statistically very clear significant jumps in eating disorders as soon as countries that didn't have Western TV now introduced where it's a lot of images of women and thin women and the only kind of women that get put up on a pedestal in our society, which are extremely thin, mostly white women. 
And then you start looking at what a huge problem it is, the factors that cause it. We know exactly what creates eating disorders and exactly how to end them. But it's something that is not widely known because what happens in our society is that women get individually blamed for their eating disorder. Well, you didn't try hard enough. Well, why don't you have more willpower? Well, you should have stuck to your diet. Well, you know, if you just put this in place or in that in place, or, you know, did this pill or whatever it is. And it's through the individual blaming of women that this problem gets put on the shoulders of the individual women who are struggling. But when you see such a massive issue that is impacting so many women, what must be looked at is systematically what is causing eating disorders. And that is the way that women are treated in society. That's it. The number one cause of eating disorders is restrictive dieting. And the number one cause of restrictive dieting is the expectations that society, the impossible expectations that society puts on women. It is systematic. It is something we are taught from the time that we are born. It is interwoven in the healthcare system. It is interwoven in education. It is interwoven in relationships of the expectations that are put on women. Messages like thin at all costs. It doesn't matter what you have to do as long as you can be thin. If you are thin, you can be respected. If you are thin, that you can be loved. And if not, then you cannot be respected and you cannot be loved. There is a systematic prejudice against women who are fat, women who are not trying with all of their might at any cost to be thinner than they are right now. And it is something that is an internal cage that ruins lives and kills women all over the world. Now, at Life with Lydia, it is about empowering women and ending this problem and changing society so we don't create it anymore. It's about living in a world where we are not manufacturing with the society that we are in from a very young age, women with eating disorders, where it destroys their lives. Now, the reason that I bring this up on our mission at Life with Lydia is because this fantastic video that was put out, um, again, by the New York Times about the story and experience of Mary Kane who was the fastest girl in the world. Um, she was trained and brought in by Nike um, to be trained with one of their lead coaches. And she talks about how women are treated in female athletics, especially at Nike, but this is an issue with female athletes all around the world. Now, what this is, is it is a reflection of how society treats women and has expectations of women. And then of course that goes into female athletics and there's a huge, huge problem there, a systematic problem. And so I just wanted to really say what a wonderful and important story this is. I'm so glad that she shared this. It's really important. I'm glad that it's getting um, so much attention. You know, there's over 16 million views with the video so far because we live in a world where people are waking up to more and more, which is a really important step, how women are treated and how they are mistreated and what we need to do to change that. So we're going to dive in today specifically with the destruction of female athletes, as is talked about by Mary Kane and her experience with Nike. So let's, you guys can watch the video, but I just want to give you some context. Um, so Mary Kane was the fastest girl in the world. She was recruited by Nike to be trained, to be even faster, to be the best athlete in the world. She wanted to be the top athlete. So notice that there are a lot of qualities where she wanted to be the best, where she wanted to get help, where she'd put so much effort in to being at the very top of her sport. And this should have been something where it was an experience that nurtured her and gave to her and took care of her and helped her improve. And that is what she was there for. But what her experience turned into was a coach. And as she said, a, a structure there at Nike that was designed by and for men that destroys the bodies of girls. And she goes on to talk about how it destroys the bodies of girls. And one huge piece of this in female athletics at Nike and elsewhere is that there is so much emphasis on weight and being thinner and thinner. So she went from being this incredible athlete to 
being put on a very restrictive meal plan to being told she needed to lose weight. That was the number one thing that they gave her to improve her sport. And like she mentions, yes, weight in sports is a factor, but let's look at what the actual result was of putting so much emphasis on weight loss for Mary. She lost her period, which means that she isn't producing the estrogen that she needs and your bones start breaking. This is a extremely fit athletic girl who is the fastest in the world. And because of what she is being told in a system that is controlled and for and by men, what she's being told is that at all costs to lose weight. Now it would be one thing, it still wouldn't be okay, but it would, it would be one thing if an incredible female athlete could at any cost lose weight. Maybe she has an eating disorder. Maybe she has food obsession. Maybe she's like Mary was saying, you know, suicidal, cutting herself. It's destroying her life. But it would be one thing to be like, well, that was really awful. It destroyed your life. But man, you're so much faster. You're such a better athlete. It still wouldn't be okay. But if you get the result of you can lose this weight and be a better athlete, that is very different than thinner at all costs, and it destroys your body. It doesn't help to be the fastest in the world if your bones are brittle and breaking. It doesn't help to be the fastest in the world. As Mary was saying, she was there at the start line of a race and she wasn't focusing on winning the race. She was focusing on the number on the scale that morning. So what it is, it's an actual destruction of girls' bodies. And this is what we see echoed through our society over and over in the name of, and I'll put this in quotes, health, in the name of athleticism, in the name of improvement and progress. It is be thin at all costs. And what it actually turns into is that the obsession with weight loss and pushing our bodies to be a size that they're not designed to be and restricting calories and obsessing with food actually does the opposite. In the name of health, we say lose weight at all costs and it ruins our health. In the name of health, we say do whatever you can at all costs to lose weight to make you faster and it actually destroys your body and makes you slower. In the name of speed and health and athleticism, we say, well, like she was talking about being body shamed in front of people by her coach um, of really having the whole emphasis be on her just, you know, being thinner and thinner that it actually destroyed her career, destroyed her athleticism. So we are getting the exact opposite of what we want, of what we say this is all for. So why do we do that? Why do we do that? And why we do that is because we live in a misogynistic society. We live in a society that creates always impossible standards for women that as long as a woman can focus her whole life on trying to fit into an impossible standard, she is not focusing her life on having an incredible career or moving up in the world or having success or coming up with the incredible solutions to the world's problems or being in her full power. It is a systematic form of oppression of women that is in within a system that very much supports a world that is designed by and for men. And those attitudes go into every area of our world, every part of our society, including female athletes and athletics with like women's divisions and women's sports. Like, so you look at the priority. It's the priority of thinness over everything else. And it's not even thinness for a good cause or something great is going to come of it, but it's actually something that is destructive. But we have that lie in our brain so strongly that thinness is so important that it becomes more important for a woman than anything else in life. And women are so incredible and complete in their minds and their bodies and the incredible ideas and solutions that they have and the incredible contributions. And what we do is we rank all of that possibility, all of that intelligence, all of that talent, all of that purpose underneath, but 
are you thin? Or are you trying to be thinner? Or are you doing what you need to to lose weight right now? This is something that we see over and over and over with the hundreds and hundreds of people that we have freed from this problem is that they are incredible, caring, powerful, intelligent, successful women that are putting off so much in their lives because they can't imagine their success. They can't imagine their goals. They can't imagine being loved. They cannot imagine being successful until they are thinner. And you can spend your entire life in that cage. There is an impossible standard that society has set for you. So you go and you put all of your effort toward reaching that impossible standard and you never reach it, but then you say, well, I can't do anything else until I reach it. So you spend your entire life with your music still in you, with never being able to do what's really possible. I mean, Mary Kane was the fastest girl in the world. Imagine what would have been possible for her if her world wouldn't have been destroyed by a system that put emphasis on thinness over everything else. I want you to imagine a world that we could live in where the emphasis is not on thinness over everything else, where we actually see women for women, where we see on media and in movies and on with musicians, women in all different types, shapes, women all different sizes, knowing that health has nothing to do with the size that a woman is, seeing romantic leads with women who are fat women and women of all sorts of different varieties of colors and shapes and abilities. And we see a world that is healed. We see a world that has the answers to the problems that the world is facing. We see a world with great ideas and intelligence. There is so much peace that comes from literally half of the population not being born in to the oppression of these ideas. So I'm really proud of Mary Kane for bringing awareness to this, especially um, for female athletes. I know that a very common reaction of women speaking up about ways that they are being oppressed or systematically um, uh, prejudiced against them or being mistreated in any way. I know that a natural reaction in our society, not a right reaction, but one that is embedded in our society is to not believe the women who are speaking up, is to insult the women that are speaking up, is to shame the women that are speaking up. And so I'm sure that, you know, Mary has gotten a lot of this and I am really proud of her for having, having a voice, using her voice and being willing to speak up for this despite the backlash that inevitably comes when somebody is here to help women and to share that message. So I just wanted to bring awareness to this video. Again, I posted the, the link below this video so you guys can go and watch that for yourself. Um, Mary Kane's incredible story. She has some great suggestions in, um, at the end of what we need to do to change um, like female athletics and um, what needs to happen in those systems. And really those are the sorts of things that need to happen worldwide. But here is what we know at Life with Lydia is that when we, when we wanna change the world, there's one thing of changing society and that absolutely needs to happen. But how that is going to happen is to have more and more women in this world liberated. We have an incredible army of women out of their cages that we have now freed from their eating disorders that are getting to do incredible work in the world. We have lawyers and doctors and incredible mothers and teachers and people that are empowered out there because now they've woken up to the truth of why they had an eating disorder, how to end the eating disorder, and the very messages that our society gave them they do not believe to be true anymore, that they know are lies and are wrong, and now they have the ability to challenge the other lies that they've been told throughout their life. That is the power, the power of what we are doing. And if you want to be one of those people that is free from your cage so that you can live your purpose and do what needs to be done in the world and live in the light that you were meant here to share, then that first part is your freedom. Because trying to live your purpose on top of this lie and this struggle and this struggle with food and feeling like you truly aren't worthy, like 
you're not just you're not going to be able to sing the music that you're really meant to sing. So the first step is to get out of that cage. And the first step to get out of that cage is to get the foundation of freedom. And that is a free, free service that we do. It's called a breakthrough session. You can go to lifewithlydia.com slash apply. Again, that's lifewithlydia.com slash apply. And what you are going to do is book a free breakthrough session with our team. And we are going to work with you one-on-one -on -one to get you the foundation of freedom, to let you know and have it be really clear your next steps to having your freedom, to be out of your cage, to know how to challenge the thoughts in your mind that have led you to destructive behaviors that have kept you small exactly how they were designed to and how to break free from the cage that you have been put in. Because once you know how to get out of one cage, you know how to get out of any cage. So, oh, amazing comments here. So Jen C, she's saying this is such a powerful message. Um, as I raised an athlete and played college sports, well, at times it is empowering. It can also lead to unrealistic expectations and pressures. Thank you for bringing attention to it. Thank you so much, Jen, for sharing that. So glad that you're here. And yes, these are really important things to bring awareness to and so appreciate you guys' support in this because this is how we make the change that needs to happen. Janet is saying, thank you. Yay, so fun to see you here, Janet. And then Jen J, so other Jen, we've got multiple Jens on, saying, I am honored to be part of that army. Yes, Jen. And Jen, you are doing so much good in the world. Um, as one of our grads and one of our incredible freedom warriors, like you are literally saving lives by being a witness to what freedom is like. And it's such a beautiful thing. So I love it, you guys. Um, again, it's lifewithlydia.com slash apply to book a free breakthrough session so that you can start on that journey of being free. And that is how we are going to change this once and for all. Nothing can stop a good idea that's time has come. Um, women being free from these cages is something that's needed to happen for a very long time. Now we have the momentum and the awareness to, as each of us individually get free, to be able to spread that to others. And that is how we change the world. And that is what we are doing here at Life with Lydia, is ending eating disorders and empowering women to be out of their cages. And I will go ahead and sign off now. I would encourage you guys to watch the video and you know, post any comments or thoughts here about our topic today. And we will talk to you soon. Lydia, the Lifestyle Coach.